we go through the uh, always to uh, table top 10 uh, in, re in regards to work required with three types of application to fix the problem. So uh, in the application itself or using the web or using the, uh, the policy. So I'm not talking about the table itself, just look at the paper um, and uh, you get all the information in there. It, it Sorry. Policy, yeah, you can say, side? well, that, that's not allowed using. Oh, uh, so policy. Yeah. Um, but one thing, there is some, sometimes I don't know, maybe a misconception, but there are some elements of the OS top 10 that no one handles in any way, shape, or form. Then there's a minus in there. So it can't be dealt with. So, you, for example, uh, Secure storage, for example, is the policy to use secure storage. It can be only be enforced using a policy. Uh, the WAF can't help you at all. <coughs> okay, then uh, the criteria for deciding whether or not to use the application. So um, it's a company-wide criteria, basically, and uh, it it goes further on the idea earlier in the paper in, in uh, prioritizing your applications. So it's the importance of the applica application for the success of the company. If the application is offline and you can't do any uh, customer business anymore, then probably you should use uh, security somewhere and uh, not just a replication firewall or not just app testing tools or not just network uh, networking firewalls. You just use everything and make sh uh, sure that you secure your application as best as possible because if that's offline, you've got a problem and no money probably as well. Then uh, you look at the number of applications. Um, sometimes it needs a policy to say, well, don't run off and implement your own web application file, uh, firewall, uh, your web application using PHP and then Python, and then Perl, and then Ruby. Uh, you need a company policy which says we implement web application using product XYZ or language XYZ, period. Otherwise, you've got a big overhead in managing the security of all those things. <coughs> and uh, complexity comes with that, of course. Then operational costs. Um, have a look at what vendors try to charge you for all their products. So you can buy a VAF really cheap, but maybe it's, it, turn out, it turns out to be really expensive after you try to change hardware and something like that. And uh, performance and scalability, something you mentioned already. So have a close look to that. So have you seen cases where companies have built their web apps uh, securely enough that they don't need web application firewalls? No, not really, no. Um, they think they did, but it's, it's a pr uh, yeah, they're proud of their applications. And uh, if somebody's proud of something, then it's, it's hard to actually talk against it and say, well, look at this. Right? You show them some problem. I did a talk on the university, and they had a, a tool to manage all the students. And the students could look into it and uh, what, uh, uh, um, how they did basically in their certifications and stuff like that, and had a big problem. You could uh, turn it basically from an F into an A. It's, it's just it was one GET request, and I showed him that online why he was really proud about his uh, application. He said, well, uh, okay, I can fix it within two minutes. And he said, okay, no problem. But what happens if somebody does that while you're on holiday? Uh, well, then I fix it after that. I've got a log where everybody changed it. So then good luck in going through the log file where everybody changed his FT into an A. So it's, it's not a solution. Yeah. Yeah, another thing kind of on this question is the, the one argument is you cannot protect what you don't see. So even if you think you have the best web application, but if you're putting it, it's flying on the internet, you don't know who is attacking it because you don't have the visibility at the web application level. So you, some of these devices even help you to monitor or even know that what kind of attacks are coming. Also, you can only protect the code that you write. So Very important. <laughs> I don't trust any frameworks as well. <coughs> I wouldn't, because in a BAA is no Tomcat, basically. So, so for example, when written by the application owners. Yeah. Oh, actually, by the application owners, I don't like their code. <laughs> so, uh, part two of that uh, criteria is basically uh, the same thing as I uh, mentioned before in the paper. Uh, 
is also changeability of the application, just mentioned uh, documentation. You have to pressure your guys into document the applications. They don't like that. Uh, there are enough tools even uh, to document stuff in the in the code and get some sense out of that. So pressure them into using this. Uh, then time required fixing bugs in third-party products. You have to uh, think of those. And in Microsoft, it could be weeks to months to years. And if it's your own application, it could be minutes to also weeks. In a bank, it's weeks in a big one, like the UBS. Uh, and con consideration of financial aspects, I, manage, uh, I mentioned that already, so look at the license costs, the update costs. Uh, projects, just do a project cost for evaluation, uh, introduction of a verification firewall, just make a project, a, a big what if project basically. What if I would implement a, a verification firewall? What need I, do, uh, need, I do, need I need to do? What do I need to do? So the other way around. <coughs> and do you have, um, how do you um, approach understanding what are the major costs in in implementing well, from, a, from a implementation perspective? What are the in the paper major factors? Um, in the paper, we don't mention that really. So you you should actually look at the the tables we have, and uh, some sometimes if you have a disciplined development network uh, development team. Uh, and they use some tools already, it's probably easier to implement a verification firewall. But you don't know that if you're in a big corporate because you probably have many development teams flying around. And it's always it's down to the responsibility of the manager of that team to get their people working, uh, working tidily on the code and then they clean up stuff and maintain it and get updates out and stuff like that. So you can't just put some figures next to something on a, on a, uh, on a table here. So just look through the OWASP top 10. If you've got applications which have those problems, basically, then the cost is probably higher because you have to employ more than just a verification firewall. You probably have to go back to the beginning and uh, use a static source code analysis tool to begin with. Maybe that's the first step. It's not a verification firewall. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> one thing. Um, we were nearly done with the paper, and then some guys said, well, we don't have any picture in our paper. <laughs> so we thought, okay, let's make a picture. So access to the application on the bottom and a benefit of a verification firewall of that. And um, uh, you could see, do you really need a verification firewall or not by, by looking at this? So if you have full access to the application and uh, the benefits would be low, um, <coughs> You probably need one, but not as hard as uh, the top right one guy if you just have external applications with no access to anything. And uh, uh, they have problems as well somewhere. So if you bought some, let, let's for example say you bought the SAP portal and uh, it's brand new and SAP or some consultant did the implementation for you. Um, they work on a tight budget, so they don't secure it for you. It's probably, good for you implementing a replication firewall. Um, would you say this also applies to a network firewall? Good question. I haven't thought of that. <coughs> Depends on the traffic flowing through, probably. If it's uh, mainly SSL encrypted or encrypted traffic, maybe, maybe not. If you terminate stuff on the firewall, probably.